Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm Jamamio. It is a pleasure to have you here. We're on to episode 3 of Project Hospital, and we're going to be going into the, what I believe to be the last of the tutorials. Learn the rules of hospital management and get acquainted with the hospitalization process. Oh, so there's going to be a lot to remember. Okay, to perform surgery, you need a team of the following specializations. Well, who knows? All right. Wow, this is uh, slightly bigger than the clinic that we were just running. Oh my goodness. Uh, hi boss, we're diagnosing and building out of the way. We know that you have one more talent that also might need a little refreshment. Man, I'm gonna need a lot of refreshment. Let's take a closer look at hospital management. We can start with department management. Go ahead and switch to department management mode. This mode gives you all the information about your selected department, assigned staff and rooms. It also acts as a checklist for making the department work. You can choose who will be the chief doctor. Be careful with the selection. It can have a big effect on the overall productivity of your employees. Certainty level is an important setting for diagnostics. It determines how careful the doctors are when selecting a final diagnosis and how carefully they look for hidden symptoms. Okay. Workspaces consist of a desk and a chair and a PC when built correctly. They will show up in management mode. You hire your employees through them. Ah, okay, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they both show day and night shift. Let's have a look at your hiring options. Click on an empty workspace without the portrait to open up the hiring cards. Let's zoom in a little here. All right, there are four staff categories, doctors, nurses, technologists, and janitors. You can see their experience levels, skills, and their requested salary. Also, the character perks can make a big difference and are often hidden. If you're not happy with the candidates, a hiring agency will be happily, happy to provide you with a new list or uncover hidden perks for a fee. You hire an employee by clicking on their portrait. You can also assign any workplace from the employee card. Not sure what that means. You can assign any workplace from the employee card. Maybe when you've got them selected, potentially? After hiring an employee, you can see their allowed roles on their workspace. Let's have a closer look at your staff. Open up any of your employees' cards. Click either an occupied workspace in management mode or directly on employee in game mode. Oh, so like, click on that, okay. All right, every employee has a few different statistics, their level, skills, and specializations. For technologists and nurses, there are three different specialization levels. For doctors, five. Different specializations get available as the employee levels up. The nursing intern, hey? Eh? Skills are fixed for each type of personnel, but get improved by being used. You can learn more about individual skills in tooltips. So patient care. Nice. Specializations can give the opportunity to work at certain departments or rooms and allow the employee to perform specific examinations or treatments. Doctors can have one or two specializations. First one allows basic work at a certain department and is available for all residents. Uh, level two. I'm guessing intern is level one, maybe. The second one is usually related to surgery or diagnostics and available for fellows level four. I think that's what this, this is here. So nursing intern at level one. Uh, employee roles. Where am I looking at employee roles? Uh, here maybe. Uh, give you the option to control what tasks each employee is allowed to Form. This way you can make sure that you have the staff available 
they really needed, for example, for surgery. Let's take a quick look at management tools for the whole hospital. Open hospital management card by clicking any of the categories in the main panel. This card contains five categories. Departments, statistics, insurance, ambulances, budget, and statistics. Check them often because they will give you feedback you need for running an efficient hospital. Now onto the fun part. Holy crap, this looks busy. Oh, so much to think about. Our hospital needs a functional hospitalization process at the general surgery department. Switch to Department Management and select General Surgery Department. Department Management. Oh, you click on so General Surgery. Okay. Check what rooms are missing at General Surgery Department and build them. Uh, remember that rooms with red numbers next to them are mandatory. Tool tips for room suit. So we need a HDU. To finish, uh, let's just quickly. So we got it. We got a free room here. I'm assuming this is what it wants us to build. Maybe. Um. We hover over that. This may be way too big for what we want, but. Cause this is four by three, so maybe, maybe that was a bad idea. Is that one, two, th so let's, let's make it that room. Uh, That's uh, apparently a janitor room, so. Uh, okay, get rid of that. Let's go back to here. It's got, a, well, it must be one of these rooms. Let's make this room one then, I guess. Yeah? Okay, so we just want, so we're just conscious of money. We don't need to be, but hospital bed. Bedside cabinet. Why is that? Why is that blue? I think that worked. Just sort of playing with the options there, I guess. All right, time to hire a surgeon for the day shift in the on-call room. Oops. Uh, if you hover over the professions tooltip, Uh, 
Uh, they can be filtered in the hiring card. Time to hire a surgeon for the day shift in the encore room. If you hover over the professions, tooltips will advise you which specialization is required. Specialization in specialize in operative surgery. Okay, so then we go to the hiring card. How do I get to the hiring card? Last time I had to go in here and go hiring new staff. Management mode. I'm in management mode. Okay. Press code. Let's try this. Okay, so hiring new staff. Select management mode. Done. Click on a works workplace in your chosen room. So how do I know which is the on-call room? What's the on-call room? That's what I don't understand. So I need to hire staff for the on-call room, but which is the on-call room? I think that's a... Uh... This is, this is not telling me what I need to know right now. Is this the on-call room? Um, for the day shift in the on-call room. Doesn't tell me what the rooms are though. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna guess. It's janitor, that's break room. It's gotta be this, right? We can filter on that. Done. I guess. I don't know. Now that we have working hospitalization, the ambulance will bring us the first patient. This should only be a minute. Speed up a little bit. It's a little confusing there because it's like specifically said on call room. Pause the game so you can select the patient easily. Take the patient under your care. All right. Now let us follow the patient through our hospitalization process. This can start at the emergency department with observation or trauma hospitalization. Patients get admitted for observation when there is no clear diagnosis, uh, which there doesn't appear to be. It's a 25% on each of those. Um, 
and the patient could have one or more dangerous symptoms. Once the di diagnosis is clear, the patient gets treated and sent home or hospitalized at a specialized department. The patient goes to an observation room. Following examinations will be done by the on-call room staff and your doctor and the doctor staff at the clinic will take another case. Trauma center is an essential unit for handling different types of traumas and accidents and most critical cases that your ambulance bring to the hospital uh, ambulances bring to the hospital arrive here. Trauma centers work the same as the observation room as long as the diagnosis is not clear. The patient will be examined there. Let's go back to our patient on their way to the trauma center. So this is a trauma center. Try to find out what is wrong and reach a clear diagnosis. You. Where's my janitor's at? I don't want to rush this just yet. I just want to let this play out a little bit. So we got two hidden symptoms. So there's not an active examination. Um, I'm very confused what I'm supposed to do here. Go back to a patient on their way to the trauma center trying to find out what is wrong. Alright. To a physical examination? I guess. I don't know if this is the right thing I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, so that, that worked, I guess. I had to initialize that. Okay, I thought they would do that automatically. Um, severe hemorrhage, blood loss, hypovolemic shock. To get those treatments going, we should get rid of those. I think that's what I'm meant to do. I think I'm doing the right thing here. The patient is waiting for you to plan another examination or select a diagnosis. So, penetrated spleen requires abdominal surgery. I'm really going to try this. Splenopancreatic laceration, liver laceration, penetrated spleen rupture, and hepa, hepatosplenic laceration. So the idle in bed, they're just not doing anything? Uh, Listening to the stethoscope, surely that's not it. Uh, fast assessment with sonography and trauma. It's a specific ultrasonography 
ultrasonography method using evaluation of trauma patients. Guess let's do that. I don't know if uh, I don't know if this is the right thing to be doing. There we go, spleen rupture. Uh, okay, so penetrated spleen rupture. So we know what it is now, uh, and that requires abdominal surgery. Okay, so with a clear diagnosis, the patient gets hospitalized at specialized departments. Every department has two types of inpatient rooms, regular, or HDU hospitalization. Regular ward is suitable for patients without any risk of life-threatening conditions. I'm assuming an ruptured or a penetrated spleen rupture is life-threatening. High dependency unit is suitable for patients in risk of collapse or life-threatening condition. They're generally equipped with life monitors to keep an eye on the vital functions of the patient. Patients collapse, they can be sent to ICU to be connected to life support and to get continuous care. Intensive care unit is not only a hospitalization type, but also a standalone department. So what's the next step for our patient? Let's switch the departments. Check the tooltip on the diagnosis to see which department is capable of treating. Uh, general surgery department. So we go general surgery department. Let's wait for our, our patient to be transferred to their room. The room was chosen based on the severity of the patient's symptoms. You can follow the patient by clicking the hidden cross over the bottom left corner of their portrait. Ah, okay. So we just wait. Then you're going to take him to, I'm assuming, the HDU. This isn't the hospital that I just it was on a different floor or something. Ah, look, you get an elevator going up. See, so yeah, it was, uh, okay, so it was just a different floor. Okay, so they're in the bed. Um, hospitals work around the clock. There are a few important times daily. There are a few important times in the daily schedule. Doctors' rounds happen every morning, when the doctors visit their patients and order additional examinations. How do I know what time it is right now? Day shift from seven to eight. Nurses check the patients regularly, more often than HDU and ICU. They can notice dangerous symptoms and notify the doctors so the patients get examined. Nurses also deliver meals and medicine in various forms as prescribed. When everything goes horribly wrong, well sometimes that happens and you need to do everything right and patients will die. Death can be turned off in options, the patients will be transferred away instead. Treat our patients. Suppress all high hazard symptoms. Some might still be hidden. No, we've got all, so that's fine. It's just the rup spleen rupture that we've got to worry about for this one. The patient might collapse and die if you don't prescribe the correct treatments. So 
and they require abdominal surgery. That's it. Okay, tutorial three. So that was a little more complicated. So there is, yeah, I'm hoping the campaign starts with some smaller hospitals and you build up to a bigger hospital because it was like, I didn't know where the rooms were or what they did or what they looked like or anything. And that's something that you're going to want to learn as you go, I assume. Anyway, uh, thank you for getting to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. Socials will be in the description below. And until tomorrow, have a fantastic day.